one who fucks me so good, makes me so mad. The one who is a broke motherfucker but refused to take the bus. The one who was so shitty to me on Sunday mornings because he did more blow in that one night than he did the whole week before and lied to me about it, making me feel like I was the one who was annoying. But no, he was just miserably hungover. He showed up on our anniversary wearing the same clothes he left my house in two days before. With the sickest, most beautiful flowers, but with no explanation as to where he was for two days. He stopped buying me flowers and he started bringing me plants because I love to garden. When my dad died, he put in a pathway for me. While I was away at the funeral, I call it my dead dad pathway. <laughs> he pinned me on the wall, screamed in my face, and punched the wall by my head. He accused me of flirting with everyone. I would have one sip of a martini, and he would say, you're drunk. I got bad. He said he liked it. We broke up and I got skinny again. And then he called me at 7 a.m. I was on my way to school and he just got home from the night before. I picked him up and we drove to Griffith Park. Parked on the side of the road, hiked up to a clearing, and laid down in the dusty California dirt. I took off my clothes and did yoga, naked in the sun, while he watched. And then he pushed me down and kissed me all over. Him smoky and boozy, me fresh and strong. I felt exhilarated, alive. I love that last memory. It was a good one.
think I was 10. That was the summer I started smoking, drinking, and drugs to follow. Gave up dance, violin, and piano. That was the summer my joy started to leave me. When I realized that my joy was an embarrassment. I never got high heel tattoos. And I think they buried a big chunk of my joy with him in a plot on a hill in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ryan. 
strangulated you? <laughs> I looked at him in his eyes, and we cracked up. We were in the tavern on Penn Avenue. Who knows what day it was, or what time, or what year. Probably some weekday afternoon before dinner. A beautiful time in Pittsburgh, especially in the fall. But it was summer. Fans blowing. He was in a white beater and jeans, me and cutoffs, just drinking at the bar. I would peel my legs off the cracked bar stool every few minutes. When they got too hot and itchy and I felt my skin against that gross exposed foam where the leather was ripped. <laughs> yeah, we laughed about it. But the fucked up part was, it's true. A few years before we were at a picnic in Frick Park, I can't remember whose party it was. We were drinking and eating, mostly drinking. I remember the devil went down to Georgia, came on WDBE, and everybody sang. He told me to shut up, and I just sang louder. There were no bathrooms in the park, at least not close by, so I just walked to the woods and peed. When I came back, he grabbed my arm. Where were you? Peeing. With who? <laughs> With me. <laughs> Prove it. I, I turned and walked back into the woods to show him where I peed, not thinking it was the woods. And I peed in the bushes, and what the hell was I going to show him? We walked for a bit, but he was pissed off. I can't remember what was said or how we ended up back with everyone, but he wouldn't let it go. He started poking me and asking, what were you doing back there? Nothing. Fuck. I threw my beer in his face. You know, the crowd parted and I took off running. Before I knew it, I was pinned on a picnic table, face up, and he had his hands around my neck. There was a rainbow shape of people standing around watching. I could only see white thighs and knees, OP shorts and high top tennis shoes, no faces. The sun had gone down and the park was closing. The Pittsburgh police pulled up and said, break it up and take it all. He let go of my neck and I jumped into someone's car and I don't remember the rest of the night. Maybe I went home, maybe I went and got fucked up. A few days or weeks later, I saw his mom, Donna. She said, I told you he would do it. He's just like his father. You stay the fuck away from him. I went to the Who concert with some of my friends at the Civic Center. We were drinking in the parking lot and suddenly he walks by and starts singing. Play that funky music white boy. Over and over. He was fucking this girl named Joanne by then and she ended up having his baby. So I sat in a tavern with him the same bar my dad brought me as a kid, drinking Iron City, talking about nothing, shooting pool, letting him know, it's all right, what you did. It's all right. I'm still here for you, and tonight, I'll probably try to fuck you. But you'll be too drunk, just like old times. Yeah.
that hem, my mouth hanging open, eyebrows scrunched together. I'm thinking, what the fuck is he talking about? <coughs> but do I ever really know? Ugh. Once he told me, I love you more than Upper Shepherd Scout. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's good. I know it gave me butterflies. And I know it made up for the night that it cut the side of my face and knocked me in the snow. I was mad then. Drunk, crying, dramatic man. Like I was in a movie. I walked home three miles dead in the middle of a Pittsburgh plane. <laughs> the day after he cuffed me, we went to Joey's Christmas party. The right side of my cheek and ears still unusually reddish purple. He said, Look at that tree, Louis. Look at that ornament. What do you mean? Look. Look at that silver one. It was a plastic ball hanging on the artificial tree, drenched in tinsel and fake pine scent. I touched it. It swung. Left, right, left, right. So subtle. The lights bouncing off of it. Yeah. That one. Take it off the tree. I want to see it. Does it open? I tried to twist it. And then I pulled it from the top and the bottom. And there sat this gold ring. said, for me? And he said, yeah, Lewis. Merry Christmas. I have been here so many times. 
but I don't see anything in the body. It's just me. Give you know, that married. I don't want to get married. That's the smartest thing you've ever said. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you drunk? Yeah. <laughs> we both pack up. <coughs> it is so easy with him. I've been everything with him. Sick, naked, drunk, crazy mad, crying on the toilet, in the shower. Why him? He's big, out of shape, missing teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's a ball of rage, a drunk, balding. Yeah, that too. I spaced that out to make it less, I don't know, less something. But he's a fat, balding, teeth-missing fuck. <laughs> my friend comes over to my side. Uh-huh, Larissa. No way. <laughs> Before I can ask for another drink, fresh tequila sits in front of me. Better than the last. My friend comes back again. Larissa, we have to go. Katya's fighting with her boyfriend, and she's really upset. <laughs> Can we go out on Sunday? Yeah. I am so happy and excited and worried about my breath. <laughs> Finally, the girls leave the bar. Then we go to Angel's Cafe downtown and I order a cheeseburger, fries, and a chocolate milk, and it is so good. They finally drive me home, and I sleep the sleep of drunks, heavy, blank, and dark. He never calls. The bright light in me. You know, if we have this baby, we're going to break up. I said, you know, if we don't have this baby, we're going to break up. I was in my kitchen in my alley by the glow. It was a dump, but I loved it. It's, it's darkness, the big yard. He was standing in the living room, a stone's throw away, right at the entrance of the kitchen. It was a bright peach color with orange trim. And my living room was purple with white trim. And I was cooking. I was pregnant, and even before I knew I was pregnant, I started dreaming that I was. Dreams filled with joy and this beautiful light in me, a baby. I felt so tall and beautiful, all cellulite gone. I was so alive, a giant ball of sex. Yow! Every touch made me crazy, but I was sick and nauseous. But so bright, so happy to have this little baby inside of me, even though I knew even then that I wasn't keeping it. You know, the night it happened, I was in my living room and he was in the bedroom making my bed. He just got sober, so I went in and snuck a few hits off the joint. And I went into the bedroom, and before I knew it, we were fucking so good. I was gone, I don't know where, I was soaring, and it was beautiful, amazing, a perfect moment. But I got pregnant, which is perfect too, except he didn't want it, and I didn't want to bring a baby into this world that wasn't wanted, and I didn't want a baby with a guy who would threaten me with ending a relationship just to sway me one way or the other. So I got an abortion. I was put under completely, and when he picked me up, I laughed. And they told him I was still stoned from the drugs they gave me. We got stuck in traffic on the way home, and I can remember cramps, but not much else. 
I had a movie ready when we got home and he got me my favorite Greek food. I crawled into bed and he hovered. And I told him to leave. And he did. I watched the movie, but I don't remember what it was. I slept pushing down any acknowledgement of what I did, never really talking about it again that I can remember. Although I find that difficult to believe. We broke up, just like we said we would. We didn't feel tall anymore. The cellulite came back. And my brightness dimmed and died, and I never got pregnant again. My bedroom was painted yellow with red trim. And sway for joy.